Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today, I'm going to run through some of the basics of debugging, and we're going to debug a simple Unity project in Visual Studio. This um, technique still applies in MonoDevelop or whatever debugger that you're using, and it's a really valuable just technique and skill to have. I sent out an email to my list earlier just to get an idea of how many people are actually using the debugger and know about it. I know how to add a breakpoint, step through stuff, and check out the state, and how many don't. And you can see there's a decent percent of people who haven't used it yet. And I'd say for the first couple years of my programming life, I would have fallen into that category as well. I mean, I started out as a kid, and I don't think we could even attach a debugger back then, but by the time they were available, it still took a couple years before I really understood how to use it and what the benefit was. I was writing out you know, debug logs or console logs or standard output stuff in C++. And um, yeah, you should you should definitely know how to do this stuff. So we're just gonna go through a simple scenario. We'll fix uh, two little bugs and I'll, I'll show you how it's all done. So here I've got a very simple little project set up. We've got a text object that's just taken up the full screen. You can see it right here. It's filling the screen, a canvas and a single script. So our text has a click counter script on it. And if I hit play, the idea here is that when I click, the counter just goes up. Super simple. But you can see when I click, nothing's actually happening. And we could look at the error down there, but we're gonna ignore it for now because we're gonna go through this a, a slightly different way. Now, if we look at the code, you can see we've got a click count integer, just keeping track of the number of times we've clicked, a text field reference for our click count text, that's that text object right in the middle, and then an update method that just checks to see if we press fire one, which a left click would count as. And we call it increment counter and we increment the text and change the text there. Or we increment the value and then change it to the text to match that value. So what I'm gonna do is click right over here in this gray area, right on line 17. And you see the little red circle got added. This is a breakpoint. And if I just run right now and go back in here and hit play, and start clicking, Let's see no nothing's happening. It's not actually breaking there. The reason for that is I need to attach the debugger. And if you look right up here in Visual Studio, there's this little button that says attach to Unity. This only appears for a Unity project. If you're using a you know, regular C-sharp project, Windows stuff, web stuff, it's just gonna say play and it's gonna run and attach. You can also attach under the debug window. Uh, you can attach to processes, right there, attach to process. But for Unity, you just want to use this little button, press it and attach. So I'm going to hit it and give it just a moment. It takes sometimes a couple seconds. On a bigger project, it can take a little bit longer. But this one was nice and fast. So now it's attached, and you'll notice that when it's attached, get ready for the big ding. Oh, no ding. I turned my sound off, I guess. But I can't type. I can't change the code at all. There's, there's no changing the code allowed. And if I go into here and click, now that I have the breakpoint here, you see the Visual Studio, it automatically popped up. I didn't have to do anything. It just came right to focus. Uh, the game, I can't even click on it. It's totally frozen up. It's just waiting right here. And we're stopped on this yellow line. So right where my breakpoint is, is the line that we're on. And we can look at a couple things here. So if we go to the Locals tab down here and click on that, I can actually see the object that we're in. So I can see the click counter class, the actual object for it. And I can expand this out. I can see the base object. I can see the current click count is at nine. I can also see that the click count text is null. But watch this, when I hit, if I hit F10, it just kind of runs over it and we got an error. See there's an error in the log and that was the 10th error. But I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna click again, and this time I'll hit F11 instead of F10. And if your hotkeys are different, you may have not selected the C-sharp hotkeys by default, you can go to the debug window, and you can see the, the buttons that I'm using here. So F10 is step over, F11 is step into. So if yours don't match, you can use the hotkeys, or you can go into the, uh, the options here and just set yourself back to the C-sharp standard defaults. So now I'm gonna hit F11, and you see that we've actually stepped into this method. So we haven't executed anything in this method yet, but we're one line away from implementing or incrementing the click count. So I'm gonna hit F10, 
and now I'm on this line and you see I even have um, I have a little extension here that shows the numbers right above it too but you could also just put your mouse over and see the value of the variable and I can do that for any of these and do it on click count I can do it on this and see that it's null and then hit F10 again and see it tells me right here a null reference exception is about to occur It's because click count text is null so we we'll just hit F5 and I'm gonna go back into the editor stop playing and if we take a look here you see that oh yeah this text object is null now I'm just gonna drag it from this game object of course in this case I could probably just do a get component call since we're on the same object but we're keeping it simple again this is just about the debugging part and then if I hit play again let's just um let's click it once and then let's step through it in debug mode so I click oh never mind we're still attached so we're just gonna step through it okay so we're in increment counter now I hit F11 go into this method hit F11 again or F10 since there's nothing to step into if I hit F11 there it does the same thing so click count went up to one the click count text is now a text object so it's showing the two string value of it which is basically the type and then if we look at the text you see that the text value or the text field of this this object is a string of zero and if I hit F10 one more time you see that now it has changed to the string of one and I'll hit F5 to continue that's by the way the hotkey to just continue running and it'll keep going until it hits another breakpoint it'll also kick you back to unity which is pretty nice so you see the text went up to one and I click again now I'm gonna here, actually I removed it I'm gonna right click and disable the breakpoint that just leaves it there so I can go back and re-enable it later if I want I could also just click and remove it it's not a big deal but if you have some that you want to keep around and not completely sure where they were you can remove and add them like that you can, or you can disable and enable them like that and keep them around but now you can see I can click and the numbers go up pretty cool but let's try this again with something a tiny bit more complicated and we're gonna uncomment out oh look at this see I can't can't type here actually let's uh let's go to a breakpoint real quick and then try it so let's hit play I'm gonna click come on let it compile there we go. I click. Now I'm going to go up here and try to code. Now we should get our dings. Uh, still no noise. Apparently I've got the sound off. But you see here that I still can't change this code. Now in another C Sharp project that's not a Unity one, you actually can go in and change it with edit and continue. Um, in here, just it just doesn't work with Unity the way the engine is set up. And it's a bit of a bigger problem to solve, I think, in Unity than in normal C Sharp development. But to fix this so that I can actually change the code, I need to stop debugging. Now the hotkey that I use is Shift F5, but if you just go to debug and look for stop debugging, you can see what the hotkey that you have set is. It should be Shift F5 by default, but if it's not, you know, you, you know where to go. And F5, by the way, is the attach hotkey. So it's F5 and then Shift F5 to stop. Okay, so now I'm gonna uncomment out this line and this line and we can just comment out that line we don't care about that actually here let's just leave it in so now the idea is that we'll click and instead of incrementing it um, let's call this well actually I will just leave it named that instead of setting the text to the click count number we're gonna set it to a random text value that's gonna be that length so it's gonna be whatever the number is length long so it'd be like one character then two characters three characters and they're just gonna be randomly selected characters so I'm gonna hit play we're gonna see how this works and see if it does work at all and then when it doesn't work which is not gonna work we're gonna step through and debug it and I'll, I'll show you um, again just a slightly more complicated process still easy because we want to keep these samples simple but look here click and we're just getting a single a single one each time so let's add a breakpoint or we already have a breakpoint let's just hit F5 come back into unity and I'm gonna click we'll go into increment counter and we can see our click count is at 13 so that's not a problem that's going up the text is changing to 13 right there and then here it's just getting an invalid value let's just hit it once I hit F10 to step over at that time and you see it got the value of F now I'll go back into unity I'm gonna do it one more time I'll click again F11 F10 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 and now I'm gonna hit F11 to step into the random text generators generate method and you see that it already automatically switched us over to the correct file and we're right here on this line right in the entry of generate we're passing in a value of 15 and I'll step over so just hit F10 
the result text is quote quote. Now watch this. I'm going to right click on this and just hit add watch. And now we have a watch window down here and if I click the pin it'll stay up. And now I can see the value of the result string that we're going to return. So right here on 14 we're going to return this. So let's step over and see what's going on with it. See what's why it's only getting a single character. So here we've uh, gone into a loop and we're going to loop over it 15 times. We're going to calculate out the max roll. Let's just add a watch to that as well. Why not? So we've got max roll is zero. Characters dot length is 36. So now when I step over this line, I expect max roll to change to 36. Cool. And then I'm going to select a random character. So let's add a watch to the random character as well. Just right click, add watch. And you see that it's null. So backslash zero is just a, a null character right now. It hasn't been set up. And the goal here is to select a random character from this string between zero and the last value right here, which is just the length of that string. So if I hit F10, see we've selected the random character of four. Result is still empty, but we're gonna change that in a second. And I'm gonna hit F10, and now result is four. And let's uh, continue on. So we went back to the top of the loop. Now I can hit F10 again. Max roll, it probably could be outside the loop. It's never changing, right? Um, so max roll is the same, we hit F10, random character is now V, and I hit F10, and look, result turned to V. So you may have already seen it, just looking at the code again, like I said, I wanted to keep this really, really simple so that it focused just on the debugging part, not so much on the actual bug. But the problem here is that we're just resetting result instead of appending to it. So we're not adding the random character, we're replacing the value with the random character. So what I want is a plus here. Can't add it though because we're debugging. So I hit Shift F5, add that plus, save again. And I'm gonna hit F5 and just reattach. And then we'll go back in and I need to restart my project because it does need to recompile for those changes. Okay, we're in any second now. I'm gonna click. We're gonna just step through it one more time. So there we go, we got the increment counter. I'm gonna actually remove this breakpoint. I'm gonna go into generate, just click on it, hit F12, or here, let's go back. We can also, uh, what is it, hold control and click on generate, to go into it. Just another little shortcut that's nice to know about. So we're in the generate, and I'm gonna add the breakpoint here now instead. And we can have multiple breakpoints. So I could put a breakpoint here, and then one there. In fact, let's do that. So here we're, let's see, hit continue. Oh, I think that I think things bugged out just a little bit. I'm gonna stop, go back into Unity, stop, and then go back to Visual Studio and build. One thing that you'll run into a lot is um, if you try to make the changes and hit F5 and attach while Unity is still running, it can't recompile because Unity is running. The other thing that happens is if you're attached and you go back into Unity, it also can't recompile because you're attached and it's running. So you need to detach, make your changes, you know, detach, make your changes, restart the play, you know, stop playing, play again, and then reattach for it to work. And that may seem like a lot, but it's, you know, it's really just a couple clicks and it should be a relatively fast process. So don't don't be discouraged by the, the whole process there. But you just Gotta remember that if you're attached and debugging or you're running, it can't recompile. So you just need to be out of both of those states before trying to recompile. So there we go, let's see, we're back. I'm gonna hit F5, reattach. I've got these two breakpoints now and none in here. And also you'll notice, you'll get a little yellow uh, circle there sometimes. And that generally means that the code in your editor it doesn't match what Unity's using, so it's not matching the most recently compiled version, and it can't attach, can't break at those breakpoints because it doesn't match. So if that's the case, again, just you know, make sure that you've stopped them all, done a build, and then gone back in. If that doesn't work, just restart Unity or restart Visual Studio. It, it fixes it. Sometimes things just bug out, but like I said, it's not that common. All right, so we're in. I'm gonna click. And we hit the first breakpoint. You may notice that I put the breakpoint here, but it actually stopped down here. That's because it stops on the next actual method. It can't really break on a line where there is no method. This is really just syntax in there. We could have any amount of white space. That's so not executing, so it's not really where it can break. It'll break on the next actual statement. So there we go. I removed that breakpoint, by the way. I un unclicked it, that's why it's gone. So here we're getting the result, and I'm just gonna hit F5, and it's gonna stop at the next breakpoint. 
So now result is going to be added, or F is going to get added to result. I still have my watches here, and I'm just going to hit F5. Okay, and that's fine, because we only had one character, right? Now let's do it again. So here we are, we're coming in. We go through the first one. Result is F, F. Oh, okay. And let's, uh, here, let's add a breakpoint at the end. And we'll hit F5 again. We're adding the random character four. What, what's the length here, two? Okay. Now we have FF4. Interesting. Let's click again. And let's see, what's result? Result is G. Now it's getting a Q added, and then it's gonna get another G added. So I'm just hitting F5 every time here. We get at the end, and now it's Q, G, Q. Cool, and we click again, and we'll get another one. But here, let's just add the breakpoint right at the end. Now it's Q, whatever. So I, I think you get the idea here. I've just removed all the breakpoints, and I can keep clicking, and the string's just getting nice and longer and longer as I click. Um, anyway, I hope this is kind of helpful. If you're not used to using the debugger, I highly recommend it. It's a lot easier than adding in debug logs and trying to look at those. And it's a whole lot easier when you're trying to step through somebody else's code. So if you want to figure out you know, how does this code work, what does it do? And if, it, if you can't follow it just by reading it, adding a breakpoint and just stepping through line by line and looking at the state as the state changes or as you know conditions are checked and statement if statements and switches are gone through being able to step through and just watch that visually you know literally step by step can make a huge difference in your understanding of the code and just making it so that it's you know easy to read and i guess like i guess it's easier to understand right just step through it, it definitely helps i do it all the time when i'm not quite sure what code's doing or you know what why they're doing a thing a certain way so anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions about debugging, please feel free to just drop a comment below or sign up for my email list and just shoot me an email. I'm happy to reply and try to help you through this process. Also, if you have some other tips that you'd like to share with other people watching this video on debugging, you know, again, just drop them down below. They're always helpful. There's always a lot of good comments down there. All right, um, thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit alert buttons, and share with all your friends. And uh, have a great day.